بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد كتاب الله وسنة الرسول صلى الله عليه وسلم is clear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified for us Islam wa iman wa ihsan and the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam clarified for us on the tongue or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarified for us on the tongue of the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Islam wa iman wa ihsan kama ja fi hadith Jibril as it was mentioned in the hadith of Jibril alayhi salatu wa salam when the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was asked about Islam wa iman wa ihsan and he made clear the five pillars of Islam, the five pillars of Iman, the five, the, the, uh, the five pillars of Islam, the six pillars of Iman, and the, the pillars of Ihsan. And letting us know the completeness of the religion. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam made clear for us everything. Islam is complete. And from the Athar of the Salaf, which verify for us, because we have plenty of texts from the Quran and the Sunnah to illustrate for us that. We also have the statement, Qal Imam Malik ibn Anas, Imam Dar al Hijra, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Imam Malik, one of the Imams, the four Imams that are followed in their jurisprudence, that the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has ittifaq on their fadl. And their makan, you know, their position and their status and their greatness. Imam Malik said regarding the completeness of Islam and that Islam, according to the Quran and the Sunnah, Allah made clear for us everything, including our aqidah, which we should emphasize aqidah. We call the tawheed, we begin our dawah with tawheed. Imam Malik ibn Anas Rahimahullah Ta'ala said Mahalun An yakuna nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bayna lil umma Kullu shayin hatta khira'ata Hatta khira'a Wallah yakun Bayna lahum tawheed He said The issue you know, basically in refutation of those people who claim that Islam didn't clarify Aqidah or that there's something left, some bid'ah that we need to add to the religion because it was incomplete. Imam Malik said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he said in the issue that the, uh, 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 of saying that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam clarified for us everything, even the manners to observe while using the restroom, but he didn't make clear for us Tawheed. You know, Imam Malik brought that up to, to emphasize that the person who says that, that's batil, that's falsehood. To say that Islam only clarified those things related to purification, related to other aspects of the religion, but Islam was complete. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made clear for us Tawheed. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that was his da'wah. His da'wah was to, was to Tawheed, to the oneness of Allah, to Barak wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِشَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and worship Allah and do not associate partners with Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And your Lord has commanded you to worship Him and Him alone and be righteous or obedient to your parents. All of those verses illustrate for us ibadah, worshiping Allah 
subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they weren't commanded, meaning the nations before us, except to worship Allah alone with sincerity, ikhlas. So Islam commands with that. And the Prophet Sallallahu said when he referred to the haqq of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hadith of Mu'adh ibn Jabal radiyallahu ta'ala anhu He said, Ya Mu'adh, atadri ma haqq Allah al ibadi wa ma haqq al-ibadi ala Allah Mu'adh said, qala kultu ya rus, kultu Allah wa rasuluhu a'lam qala haqq Allah al ibadi ya'buduhu wa la tushriku bihi shayhan so the Prophet ﷺ was riding with Mu'adh radiyallahu ta'ala anhu on a donkey and he said, O Mu'adh, do you know the right of Allah upon his slave and the right of the slave upon Allah? And then Mu'adh responded by saying, Allah and his messenger know best. He said, the right of Allah upon his slave is that he worships him alone and he doesn't associate a partner with him. Letting us know that the Quran and the Sunnah is filled with clarification or the command to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. That Tawheed has been clarified as, bore, as is first witnessed in those ayat, which is the asl, the nusus. And then to that beautiful statement of Imam Malik, letting us know the Prophet ﷺ clarified all the things that we need to function in this life. Spiritually, menta mentally, and physically, you'll find a lesson from the Messenger of Allah ﷺ. You'll find the example. And that includes, first and foremost, the call to Tawheed. So we should begin our da'wah, our call to Tawheed, calling the people to the worship of Allah alone, even with the believers. Why? Because many of the nation of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam have left the pristine call to Tawheed, to the worship of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala alone, and allowed shirk to come into the ummah. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Let tabi'una sunan man kana qablakum. That you would follow the way of those who preceded you, meaning the Jews and the Christians, by going astray in your religion and committing shirk. Wa'iyadhu billah. And may Allah forgive us of our many, many sins and any and all, all forms of shirk. Allahumma inni a'udhu bika an ushrika bika wa an ala mustaghfiruka lima la'alamu wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم